This is terrifying. So um, I hope you're better at drawing than me. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Soph, or you might know me better as Magical Bean Cosplay or Magical in some online circles. Um, this video has been a really, really long time coming and was originally meant to be for Pre Hero Day 2024. Um, that has now died. I want to still, I took all this footage and I have all this amazing footage from creating my cosplay and I want to make sure that we get to it today and that I get to share this with folks who maybe are just interested in the process or want to make their own cure prism, uh, whatever the case may be. So we will get right into this and how I made my cure prism cosplay. So if you have never made a cosplay before, it can be really daunting to start and to even uh, break down the pieces in what you're going to make. And I think this is especially true for pre-cure cosplays, which are very complex in design, in wig styling, in accessories, etc. And a lot of times in anime and in Pretty Cure and Magical Girl anime specifically, these outfits don't make logical sense. The first thing I do before I start any cosplay is gather a bunch of reference photos. This is the most important part uh, because you want to make sure that you're being as accurate as possible. When I compete, I am doing competitions and so this is really important for my work. If you're making cosplays just for fun, this might be less so. So as for reference photos, I like to take screenshots from the show itself, any sort of promotional material I can find. When it comes to Pretty Cure in specific, they usually have um, official front, side, and back views of the character. Uh, in addition, Precure and some other anime might do this also. They have something called Kigus or Kigramis, I think is how you say it, which are basically like life-size actors in Precure costumes. And these are a great thing to look at and to reference if you're trying to figure out specifics of how this 2D drawing looks in 3D. That is how I start to begin. After I've gathered all of my reference photos and I sort of have a general idea of what I want to make, this is when I get to the sketchbook part. What I do first is, I am not an artist by any means, but I do take the time to draw out the entire cosplay. This sort of drawing process um, of the entire cosplay yourself, rather than just in a reference photo, sort of helps to break down the different pieces and allows you to look at things more closely. So this is my full body drawing here. Um, I also do sketch out the makeup. This is scary. This is terrifying. So um, I hope you're better at drawing than me. But uh, this is literally just a sketch of how I wanted to do the makeup, how I wanted to have um, thicker eyeliner and then sort of eyeliner underneath. I have some notes here about the wigs, uh, about how the back of the wig even looks, things like that, sort of like a lip color, etc. So this is uh, one way to draw out makeup if your cosplay has very specific makeup or if you want to do your own makeup for the cosplay, whether it has specific or canon makeup or not. After you have the full body croquis drawn out, this is when I start to break down every single piece of the cosplay. And so you can start really wherever. Um, in my sketchbook, I started at accessories and then went on to the bodice, the skirt, and then the shoes. This is exactly what I did. Um, is basically draw out every single accessory type of item. So in terms of my cosplay, this was, this was things like bows that were attached to the dress. Um, this was some gloves. We had a hair bow. We had sort of a headpiece here. This is a jabot. So lots of these small pieces uh, that are within the larger dress and skirt itself. Basically, this is a great way for me to visualize all the little pieces I need to make. 
and have an understanding of what the pattern pieces for each of these items are going to be. Then I moved on to the top here, and this is where you can see sort of the pattern planning here. And so at the top here, I drew a front view and then a back view, including the zipper, any of the findings, and any of the details. There's notes on the fabric, on the different notions that I might need, and then below is where I broke it down into pattern pieces. So I have a um, this is my back and this is the front on the fold and sort of breaking down the pattern pieces from this drawing. I did the exact same for the skirt here. As you can see, this is my um, sketch and then my pattern here as well. And for the second skirt, same thing, sketch, notes on what fabric or what materials I need to use, and then a pattern here. So now that you have finished the sketching process, this is time to go pick out your fabrics and go to the fabric store or order them online. My cosplay consisted of a lot of cotton twill for the bodice and the skirt, as this is a fabric with some structure to it. I also had a lot of satin fabrics. I also used a lot of interfacing, both medium weight and heavyweight feasible interfacing, in addition to basic notions like zippers, buttons, hooks and eyes, um, lots of thread, so much thread, horsehair braid, vinyl iron-on as well. And then in addition to some mock-up fabric that I used that I already had laying around in my fabric stash, which consisted of broadcloth, cotton, and some old twill as well that I used. For the undergarments as well, I used tulle and elastic. And for the hoot skirt, I used steel boning and twill tape. So one of the best ways to make your cosplay look better and look more big and voluminous and cosplay really bringing that anime look to real life is through the use of specific undergarments. So for Cure Prism, I knew that I wanted to make a petticoat and that I absolutely wanted a hoop skirt so I could have that nice bell shape of the skirt uh, and not have it be so flat. So I took on the project of trying to make a steel boning hoop skirt for the very first time and a petticoat. So my petticoat was made of tulle consisting of both white and this like pink star tulle, but it's a very simple process of basically cutting out really long square pieces of tulle, or rectangle pieces of tulle rather, and then gathering them and sewing them together and doing different layers of that. My petticoat at the end of it ended up having four different layers of tulle, including the pink star overlay on top. Once I had all of those layers figured out, I sewed them together attached a waistband made out of cotton broadcloth and then I put an elastic through it uh, so that it could be stretchy and come on and off of me very easily. As for the hoop skirt, this was something I have never done before. I have never even touched steel boning before in my life um, and so a lot of research went into how to make this properly. So the first step was making sure I had the steel hoop boning. This was not something I could buy in my local store. Maybe if you live in a place that uh, is larger and has more selection, you might be able to find it in person. But I ordered from Farthingales, which are the people to go to if you need anything related to steel hoop boning. In addition, I got some cotton twill tape. This skirt took a lot of trial and error and a lot of measuring. At first I had it built so it had three different hoops uh, so that the skirt structure uh, was a little bit more stable, but after putting it on the mannequin and then putting the petticoat over it, I realized that that was too big and did not proportionally fit my body when I was wearing it. So we ended up putting two steel hoops only 
and encasing those in cotton twill. Then the hoops were connected uh, through cotton twill in vertical and this was something that I had to use my dress form for and do a lot of draping. Again, trial and error to make sure that these hoops were even as possible and then I hand stitched the twill tape together. There's plenty of tutorials online for things like these, so even if it seems intimidating and you've never done it before, uh, if I can do it, you can do it as well. So now that I have made the petticoat and the hoop skirt, I realized that um, I will be dancing in this cosplay and so I do not want to be um, flashing everybody with a black pair of spandex shorts because my whole cosplay is white, that doesn't really look great. So what I ended up doing in addition to the petticoat and the hoop skirt was making a pair of bloomers. They are just a simple pair of cotton bloomers with a elastic around the pant leg so that it sort of gives that, that puffy look. And then I also added a little bit of a lace hem and a little bow on the front. And so I wore this underneath of my hoop skirt and petticoat so that when I was dancing and jumping around or walking upstairs or whatever, I was fully covered and also it matched. So now that we have the undergarments covered, it's time to start tackling the bodice and the skirt of the cosplay itself. So for the bodice, I used my dress form a lot and I decided to drape the pattern. I did two separate mock-ups, one out of cotton and one out of twill, to make sure that the fit was correct. It was a lot of going back and forth between the mannequin, base stitching, and putting it on myself and my body to make sure that this top fit correctly. After I did that, I did a lining on the same pattern and cut out the fabric of cotton twill. And this was white cotton twill with a white polyester lining. The collar as well was white twill with a medium weight interfacing. In front of the top there are some scallops as well and so I made sort of a fake or a mock button placket with some scallops as well. Uh, <laughs> these scallops were actually a nightmare. Um, I probably did them five or six different times before I was happy with them. And so I basically traced half of a circle using a glass onto some mock-up fabric, cut it out, sort of laid it on the bodice and tested what it was going to look like. When I was happy with that, I transferred it over to the actual fabric, cut that out and base stitched it and turned it inside out. This is where I ran into problems and realized that I needed to be way more careful with stitching scallops than just my normal stitching routine. If I broke my stitches or stopped and picked up the needle, it was really obvious when you turn the scallops inside out. They were not perfectly round. They ended up having sharp edges and some bumps and lumps, and I did not like that. So I scrapped those versions and did it until I was happy enough with the scallops. So the scallops ended up being two pieces of cotton twill, one that had medium weight fusible interfacing, and they were attached to a faux button placket, which was then top stitched onto the bodice itself. So now that I had this top drafted and ready to go, basically all finished, I had to make the skirt. So I was going back and forth between whether or not I should make this entirely one dress, so the top and the two skirts attached together, or whether I should separate them. In the end, what I ended up doing was attaching the small skirt on the very top that has the dark pink trim around it to the top. So it sort of ended up looking like a peplum top. And then I made the second skirt that has the star and the dark navy uh, detailing on it with the yellow trim. I made that a separate skirt on its own that sort of slips underneath. 
that made it a lot easier in terms of dressing and movement and also sewing. It would have been very difficult to sew uh, three layers of cotton twill with lining uh, in them all together. And so this way was a lot more practical for sewing and a lot more practical for wearing and for storing. So the top skirt then, the one that ends up being attached to the top, was uh, drafted and draped on my mannequin at first and I just used a double circle skirt pattern to do this and once I was happy with how it looked on the mannequin I cut it out of lining and then I cut it out of the actual fabric itself. The skirt just like any other piece of white um, on my dress was made of cotton twill and attached to it was a pink trim. So what I ended up doing was having to sew this trim on a bias. Because the edge of the skirt was a circle skirt, it was rounded. And so I needed to make sure that the trim as well was rounded so that they would match up correctly in the end. So after sewing the hot pink trim in, I also added, because I wanted to make this more difficult on myself, I added horsehair braid to this trim. And that's what sort of gives it that perfect swoopy, swoopy curves, the swoopiness of it, and makes it sort of have some more structure to stand up on its own on top of the second skirt, petticoat and hoop skirt. The second skirt was constructed very similar to the first. Instead of a double circle skirt, it was just a full circle skirt out of the cotton twill. And this skirt also had a cutout made of blue satin that I already had laying around. What I ended up doing was making the entire full circle skirt on its own at first and then just sort of like slicing out, like cutting a piece of a pie, the section that I wanted to make the blue silk and then substituting the blue, not blue silk, blue satin and then substituting the blue satin in that piece that I cut out. On the blue satin, there was also some pretty important details that included a yellow star with some sort of uh, shining lights that come from the stars. I'm not sure how else to describe it, uh, but I will show you sort of a close-up picture of what the design looks like on Prism. For this, I knew immediately that I wanted to use iron-on transfer vinyl, which I have never attempted before. I ended up buying some heat transfer vinyl, I think that's what you call it, from Michaels. The iron-on heat transfer vinyl is the same sort of stuff that you would use and put in a Cricut machine, except I did not own a Cricut. So what I ended up doing was making a pattern out of paper for the star and how I wanted it to look like on that blue silk. And then taking that paper pattern and cutting it out by hand very, very carefully with scissors to apply to the blue cutout. I ended up using a yellow vinyl for the big star and then some really awesome glitter vinyl for the um, light that shines from them. And the glitter vinyl ended up looking so cute. I'm really glad that I went with that. And I actually ended up making this part of the skirt twice. Uh, the first time was my very first attempt, so it didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted to, and so I redid it a second time and was much happier with the results in the end. After I put the iron-on vinyl onto this piece, I attached it or inserted it into the second white skirt. Following that, this second white skirt has a trim at the bottom as well. And I thought I struggled with the hot pink horsehair trim, but that was nothing compared to this. This was a yellow satin trim that was scalloped on the bias. So <laughs> what I ended up doing was making a pattern piece that matched the entire circumference of the skirt and traced it onto the yellow satin. I used a heavyweight interfacing on one side of the satin and then no interfacing on the other side of the satin just so that it had a little bit more structure so sewing the scallops was easier. And so what I ended up doing is then attaching this to the bottom of the skirt after 
sewing the pieces together and trimming the insides. This, I never want to look at scallops ever again. This was so difficult, uh, but it ended up looking absolutely amazing on the cosplay. I'm so glad I did the scallops because it looks amazing and is one of my favorite parts of the cosplay to look at. I think it just adds another level of professionalism to the skirt and I'm really really happy with the result of how it turned out. Okay so after I did the cutout in the skirt and the iron on vinyl this is when I made the waistband of the skirt. Very simple just cut out a rectangle and used medium weight fusible interfacing on the waistband Close it up with an invisible zipper, I believe I used an invisible zipper on the skirt, and then a hook and eye closure on the skirt to finish it all up. So with all of that, I have the undergarments and the base of this cosplay completed. I think I have been talking for a very long time. I'm not sure how I want to edit this and put all of this together, but I hope this was a great introduction and start to sort of how I made my Cure Prism cosplay and the bodice, skirt, and beginning stages of this work as well. The second part to this will include the wig and all of the accessories like the bows, the jab bow, the hair bow, the shoes, uh, all of her gloves. So there's lots of little accessories to go over and how I made those and what that process looked like. If you have any questions about my Cure Prism cosplay, I'm super happy to answer them. You can put them in the comments below. I would love to talk about and answer any questions if you're going through the process of making your own Cure Prism cosplay or another Pretty Cure cosplay in general. I find the start of Pretty Cure cosplays are very similar. I am also open to any questions that you want me to answer about the accessories and I can answer them in the second part to this video. I guess I want to say thank you if you watched all of this and I hope it was helpful somewhat. You can find me on social media. I am at Magical Bean Cosplay on Instagram and I am also at Magical Bean Cross on Twitter. And then also follow me along for my next cosplays, which I am currently working on Miracle Wave Canyon. And then in 2024, I am going to be doing a Prepara cosplay. To, yet to be determined which one, but I'm definitely going to be making one of Lala's outfits. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope this video wasn't too long. I will see you all later. Bye. Thank you.